Okay, wonderful day, my good friends. It is extremely cold here in Connecticut this morning, record cold. And I've been talking about global warming and how we need fusion <laughs> to fix global warming. Why is it so cold here today? Glo record cold. Well, the reason is our atmosphere is expanding so fast that the scrub of us spinning through space is shifting the weather patterns. So where it was warm before, it might get cold now. Where it was dry before, it might get wet. Where it was wet, it might get dry. This is what happens when the atmosphere gets so turbulent and hurricanes and tornadoes and floods and we know exactly what's happening. And it primarily is due to the expansion of the gases and the scrub of those gases through the space which is not a vacuum it is completely solidly packed with plasma and electrons and light particles and all of the solar wind and all of that stuff is out there it's not empty by any means whatsoever that changes literally everything now we're going to look into fusion here because I think I know how to make fusion now I could be wrong I could be totally wrong, but it would take a month to find out. And then if it was right, the world literally is golden. If it's wrong, we just keep doing what we're doing. Okay, my friends. This is Roger once again. I'm going to try to do this very slowly, methodically. We have a problem with physics. What is that problem? It's not right. <laughs> and why is it not right? Not a single thing is right, basically. Uh, w once you get below the atom, in other words, once you get into molecules, yeah, I say, I, I, this, all, this stuff works pretty good. The um, periodic table, all of those stuff, and they add together and they can divide and they know chemistry pretty good. However, once you get below that range and you are in the sub- atomic range then you are inside the nucleus you are inside of light you are inside of heat you are inside of nuclear radiation all of those things and that's where I work that's the range I work in the light range so what am I looking for I'm looking to see if we could accelerate light and it appears we can this is a pulsed red laser and there is a particle inside that beam. Each one of these pulses has a particle and the particle is this particle here. Okay, you see a particle? I don't know if you can or not, but it's a black and white particle and it is this particle right here. And we can split those particles. And the way we split them was to shoot the light, the laser, through a venturi. And a venturi is nothing more than a funneled restriction. Basically, that is it. However, the tip of the venturi has to be exactly the right size so only the white can get through. Because the white and black particle that I showed you here, or will show you, I don't know if you can see it or not. It's kind of, let's see if I can shoot in on it a little bit. Alright, yeah, now you can see it, I think, I hope. Now, so that's the particle. Now, we were able to literally break that particle, it's called fission. When they break something, fission is fission. And when they come back together, which they do almost instantly, that's called fusion. And we did cold fission and fusion right on the desktop. And there it is right there. I'll show it to you in, in extreme detail. But this is the new model right here. It's as simple as this. Very, very simple. There is nothing other than electrons which you always want to have a black and a white particle attached together. I'm pretty sure that's the case. I can't be positive, to be honest with you, because I saw some stuff that was done in outer space that sheds a little question mark on that, whether they are always, 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 always attached, and there's nothing but electrons. Or are the sterile muons floating around just waiting to do something, and the electrons, are they heat? 
Something, heat flows in and out. It's not just rubbing something and they're all jumping in and excited and that's what heat is. No, it's pushing electrons in. That's why when you rub your hands, you're not just scraping, you're forcing electrons into your other tissues. That's what makes the heat. And it's just like when you put electricity through a wire, through a, a resistance, it gets, it gets hot because it's the electrons that are being forced in. And heat is nothing more than electrons leaving. Are the full electron leaving, the black and white together? I don't know. Maybe just the electron parts leaving. That's the heating part. That's the burning part. I, I really don't know. So nobody knows what heat is. <laughs> I'm not telling you right now. They think it's just a, the, the, you know, everything's vibrating. No, that's not the case. It is excessive amounts of electrons flooded into a material. And it, you, we know this. I mean, it's just so obvious. It's unbelievable. And uh, absolute zero is you remove all of these particles. Every single one of them is gone. So there's no excess of electrons in there. And guess what? That makes it superconductive. And why is that, Roger? Well, because it wants every electron it can get. There's none in there. There's not a single extra one. Ambient temperature. Everything in here at the same temperature will have a certain density of extra electrons. They won't flow out. They won't flow in. They all are the same. You bring something cold in, you put it here, and the cold just literally falls out of it. And it absorbs... I don't know whether it absorbs the full particles or just the electrons. I don't know. But everything starts to even out. And then you get ambient temperature. Absolute zero. You have not a single extra electron that would normally be in that ambient range. There's none exactly, none. So when you put electricity on that, it's superconductive. It says, give, give me everything you got, buddy. <laughs> That's, and, but instantaneously, it starts to fight back because it's being filled up just like everything else. That's why they can't maintain superconductive temperatures because as soon as you start flooding with electrons, you just lost it. There's no more superconductivity. It's starting to be resistive. It's starting to fill up with those electrons. And, and once they fill up, so filled up, you know, we just made it so that we could get the white particles coming through. So we have already done exactly what Fermi Lab wants to do. And I'd like to have Don Lincoln talk to me about this because, you know, or Fermi Lab or somebody, Lawrence Livermore, you know, uh, because this is the new model. It's electron flood theory. The protons are not like that. Protons and nucleuses are not big chunks. They are particles. And they know this because they take the protons, smash into bits, and they end up with these particles. They see these particles. They just don't know where they came from. They have no idea that they started out in a big ball of electrons, which are dipoles. And they are these. And 1839 of them traditionally make up what they call a proton. And 1840 is a neutron. And as you get bigger and bigger and bigger balls of these things, they become different elements. And then they have different bonding characteristics. In other words, they glue together with other things in certain ways and some of them can glue one to one just something comes up in bonds like that some of them can glue here six different ways with this and that and 50 different thousands of different particles together that's what creates life that's what life's all about now what is dark matter well it's these electrons but in a in a proton or in a molecule you will never see that dark matter. And why is that? Well, it's because this is what you would see. You would see the outside core, which is the white matter. The white matter wants to get away from its electrons. They're just, you see them here? That's pushing and shoving. That's a single slit. And you see those, it, it, they would call those interference patterns from flapping and waving from a double slit. This is a single slit. These are push to shove patterns. You stay away from me, you stay away from me, okay, you stay here, and they make these lines. The major part comes through the center. Now, why do they want to get away from each other, and why don't we see them in just, you know, why they have never seen it? It's because you've got to get beyond that part into where the dark matter is. It's always going to be on the inside. Every single thing that there is, 100% of everything, as far as I can determine, until we created these sterile muons, I, I believe every single thing there is, 100%, is 
literally coated with electrons. And there is a law, I can't remember the name of the law offhand, where nothing will touch each other. As soon as you get down to the angstrom unit, as close as you can get, they will try to bounce away from each other. Now magnetism is a little different, but they're still not going to like touch the center cores. There's still going to be that field effect that will always be, even magnetism, it'll want to get there, but it can't quite get there. And I can show that. Watch this. Okay, I'm about to freak you out. This is a toy, and it is literally identical to the nucleus of all atoms, and nobody has a clue. The reason it's identical to all atoms is because the central core is a big heavy-duty positive sucker. It just sucks all these negatives in. These are nothing more than negatives attracted to the core of a positive. That positive is so attractive that it will try to bring in more negatives. And these have fulfilled its requirement and they say no more. No more come in here. And that is exactly what you are about to see. Latham's crazy machine is absolutely fabulous. It's called incredible tractor beam magnets. They think it's a toy. It is not a toy. This is a nuclear core. And watch what happens when another electron comes in. You see it? Anybody that understands quantum knows that your electrons float around the core of the nucleus. Why do they do that? If this was a big positive, these were little negatives, they just snap together. It is impossible. This has to be a dipole. And it has to be more attractive in the core than it is outside. So the core is still trying to drag more negatives in, but these negatives say, no, no, you cannot come in here. We have plenty surrounded here. Don't come in here. And it says, well, what do you want me to do? And it says, I want to get into that center. And it says, you can't get to the center. We won't let you. And that's called at the quantum distance. It says, well, if you stay right there, you can stay there. I know you want to get in there, and you want to get in so hard, and we want to push you so hard. This is push to shove. I'm trying to push my way in. You're shoving me back out. Push to shove. It creates an atomic angstrom unit distance. Angstrom units are, are measured in very, very tiny, tiny, tiny little distances. Obviously, you can't see. This will never do an angstrom unit. Angstrom units are down to the point where you can't even see them. Well, you're never going to see them because they're in the nucleus. Now, you can only see them with some of these new tools we have that really sort of show what the nucleus is designed like. I've, I've, I, well, I'm going to show you the electrons. We've seen these. And we see exactly what happens here. It's not a big mystery anymore. The mystery is that we can't get anybody to look at it. <laughs> but here's what's happening. This will it'll stay there forever. This guy can shake it around and bounce it. Now, here's what happens when he, when he goes fast. All right, let's just, let's just stop for a second. This is Eh, just sort of walking around, like bouncing around, this thing rolling around, doing this and that. No big deal. But then you hit, hit it with a heater. It starts getting hot. And it's going to start getting hot right now. He's going to start shaking and shoving. This is push to shove. Boom, 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 boom. See? Now watch that electron move. You see it moving its orbits? This is the bounce. And this bounce determines the light that we see. You say, oh, Roger, how can that bounce determine the light? Well, the bounce is frequency. The bounce is how hard that spin off of the particle is. It's going to spin out of there. And when it does, if it's spinning real fast, it's in a blue range. If it's spinning kind of slow, it's in a red range. Simple as that. And it, we're, we're shining the same light on the same stuff. All right? So let's take this chart right here. All right, we're shining the same light on there. Why are all these different colors? How, how come they're different colors? Why doesn't the light just shine back the same as the light we're shining at it? The reason is it's chemistry. This bounces back different than this. The blue bounces a little more intensely back than the yellow and the, um, you know, the, down into the red range. They don't bounce as fast. And I can prove this because I can show red versus green bounce. 
we've gotten down into the nuclear core and seen, well, we've gotten down into light and seen the actual particles. And I think I've shown you that before, but I'm certainly going to show you again. All right, the reason I titled this absolute zero is just absolute zero electrons, because that's exactly what it is. As you remove temperature, all you're doing is removing excess electrons. Those are the things that flow. Once you hit almost, or if you could hit absolute zero, you have quantum effects, Bose-Einstein condensates, superconductivity, superfluidity. What is superconductivity? It just means as soon as you put electricity, poof, it just goes like a rocket ship. Nothing stops it. There's no resistance. Well, guess what? One instant after you start to put electrons into that, which is nothing more than energy, nothing more than electricity, nothing more than heat, it starts to push back. So superconductivity only happens if you can be exactly at zero extra electrons. No extra electrons in there. And they want electrons because they want to be at the same temperature as ambient temperature. That's why you take a cold thing and you put in a room and it's 100 degrees in there, that thing will come up to 100 degrees. It loses all its stuff. It wants to be at the same temperature as everything. If you kept a, um, a superconductive item in a superconductive ambient temperature, it would just stay there. But as soon as you put any extra electrons in, which is heat, which is electricity, you lose it. No more, no more superconductivity. So absolute zero is literally absolute zero extra electrons. That's why I called it the, the name I did.